Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and start the meeting <laughs> at 6.30. I'd like to call to order the December 3rd, 2018 meeting of the Heritage Preservation Board. I'm going to go out of order tonight just for a moment. Um, before we start a regular meeting, I thought we should have a moment of silence and a moment of prayer for President George Bush and his family. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Normally what we do is ask everyone to please turn your phones off or, or turn them to silent, please, before we start the meeting. Uh, we'll start at the far end and just have uh, the staff and the board please introduce themselves. Kimberly Yothers, Secretary to the Board. Pat Cornell. Laura Milford. Cindy Terrapani. Gary Page. Erica Agello, Board Attorney. Pat McNeese, Principal Planner. Thank you so much. Um, I guess it's a little redundant, but Kim, would you call the roll, please? Thank um, you. Mrs. Terrapani. Present. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Page. Here. Ms. Milford. Here. Ms. Cornell. Yes, here. Um, our first order of business is public comments. If anyone is here to speak on something that's not on the agenda, please feel free to come forward and use the podium. Um, to my right, it'll be on your left, please. Seeing no one rise, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. These are the minutes from our last meeting, November 5th, 2018. Are there any uh, revisions to those minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion. A motion that we be accepted. Motion by Ms. Cornell, second. Second. Second by Ms. Page. Any further conversation about the minutes? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Terpani? Yes. Um, I'm going to ask our attorney to please give the quasi-judicial announcement and swear in the speaker. <clears throat> this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Heritage Preservation Board acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the Board wishing to disclose any conflicts of interest or ex parte communications this evening? No. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak this evening, if you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear? I don't think you're going to speak. It'd be, it's easier if you go ahead and stand up now if you're not sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So sworn. Thank you. A um, couple of notes before we start. Although this is a formal process, we do not have any limitations on speaking. We want everyone to have an opportunity to present their application or if you're in opposition to a case or, or support to present your comments. Um, we do require that you come to the podium and state your name and address for the record so that we have a record of that. Um, our goal for this is to be um, easy but formal. We do, it does require certain formalities as our attorney has described. I also want to point out tonight we only have four members of the board here tonight. We're normally a five member board. Um, our quorum required is three to conduct business, so we do have a quorum. It's also in our rules and in the ordinance that three votes must, uh, you must have three votes for any decision to approve or deny. So if there's anyone here, you do have the right as an applicant. Um, if you get the sense that there's not going to be three votes um, for your application, you do have the right to request a continuance to the next month. 
and that meeting will be on January 14th. And we can deal with those as we go along, but I just want to be sure that everyone knew that they had the right to do that before we started the meeting. And we may not be needed, I just want everyone to, to know that possibility. So I think we'll go ahead and get started with application 1890-9358 Reed Street. If I'm correct, Ms. McNeese, we have a request from the applicant to be continued to the next meeting because she had a conflict and could not attend this evening. Is that correct? That's correct. This item was continued from the October 1st meeting. The applicants requested a continuance to your January 14th meeting. Um, I do. I have included the original staff report and can go through that if the board wishes. I don't think it's necessary to go through it. I, I just want to. I'll just call. Make sure Miss Diaz, Anastasia Diaz, is she present today? Seeing no one rise. What are the wishes of the board? To continue. 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 Okay. We do need a motion, please. Motion to continue. Second. Could we amend that to the date specific, which is January? 14th, is that correct? 2019. That's correct. Yes, 2019. Yes. Okay, there's a motion on the floor um, by Ms. Milford, seconded by Ms. Cornell to continue this to January 14th, 2019. Any further conversation about it? Roll call, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Terrapani? Yes. So that case was continued to January 14th. 2019. <clears throat> um, our next application is 18 121 455 East Tarpon Avenue. In addition to and a renovation of a contributing structure, this one was also continued from our November meeting. Uh, Ms. McNeese, do you want to summarize the staff report for us, please? Yes, this is an application at 455 East Tarpon Avenue to construct a one story addition onto the rear and side elevations of a single family home by renovating and extending an existing enclosed porch. Um, since you last looked at this, uh, the applicant has submitted additional information <coughs> that is included in your packet along with the building plan set that you have that's, um, as far as I can tell, identical to the one you had last month. You also have a site plan survey, um, some product sheets for a window, and um, doors and some photographs that the applicant submitted. Uh, just, I will just touch on the highlights of each of the um, criteria with respect to criterion one. Um, basically the scale, the height and width uh, of the proposed addition um, does ensure that the principal structure is predominating and does uh, seem to be subordinate to the principal structure and in character um, with the general rhythm of the neighborhood. Uh, the applicant did not submit a full east side elevation. Uh, that's just, just uh, noting that. With respect to item two, uh, the windows, again, there is a product sheet submitted. Um, a couple of things, the windows don't, the windows on the building plan don't appear to, to match the layout that's shown don't appear to, does not appear to match what is existing on the property. So that was a bit problematic when looking at the fenestration relationship. Also, the full east side elevation is not uh, available. Uh, the proposed windows do match generally in style and color. Uh, with the uh, windows that are on the structure now. Those are single, simple, uh, single pane windows with white um, uh, surrounds and trim. Um, so uh, the sizes, uh, without trying to scale on the drawings and knowing what the original window sizes are, uh, the sizes, trim, and again, fenestration of the uh, windows could not be completely determined. With respect to the door, the applicant, uh, this is the back door on the north side entering the addition. Uh, the applicant submitted product sheets for a sliding glass door and for French doors. The plan set proposes sliding glass or sliding panel doors. Um, the placement of the entryway itself seems to be, um, is a bit offset with respect to the 
to the, that elevation of the structure, but it seems to me acceptable um, with respect to, to the layout of that elevation. Um, but um, the applicant did not submit any information on the history, what was there previously with respect to the door, uh, and uh, staff did um, try to look on Google Street View at the door. I think it was a hung, hung door before, but I, I'm not completely sure that you, you'd need to um, maybe ask the applicant about that. Uh, but staff could not um, find um, really evidence that the sliding panel was, was going to be appropriate for this addition. Um, one thing I will note with respect to both elevations is the, the balustrade on the top is retained. Uh, and so that is one notable feature uh, that is a plus for this project. With respect to item three, uh, this is located in the city special area plan, transect district uh, T4A, and staff is confident that the site can comply with the transect district. With respect to the roof, Again, the balustrade is retained. Uh, the roof line seems to match um, the existing or, or what was previously there with respect to the porch roof line. I was not completely confident in um, what the east elevation would look like. I wasn't sure if the roof would be continuous or offset. I had a, a, couple, a question on that with respect to the floor plan view versus the elevation view. So um, I couldn't completely determine what that roof line would be. Fiberglass shingles are proposed. Those would need to be um, the same dimension and color as the current residents. Uh, those were not supplied in the application. Um, with respect to the size and mass, again, the proposed addition is subordinate to the, to the major structure. It's on the north, uh, northeast corner. Uh, it seems to be um, acceptable with respect to the scale. With respect to item uh, seven, the next applicable item, the applicant <laughs> proposes hardy plank siding uh, nailed six inches on center. Uh, color is not proposed in the application. They may address that here. Uh, staff um, asked for historic views of the structure, but the applicant maybe was not able to supply those. Uh, I did look on Google Street View, and I tried to paste a picture of what I saw for 2014. Looks like the porch had uh, shake or shingle type siding at that point. Um, so uh, the other item that the applicant did submit was a picture of the existing six-inch aluminum lap siding on the west side of the building that looks like it was probably part of the porch enclosure done in the 1970s. Um, so uh, that is in your packet. This side of the building is much more prominent. It, it can be viewed on the way down East Tarpon as well as obviously the full side of North Levis Avenue. So. Uh, the appropriateness of the siding, um, we, we wanted more information on, on um, uh, how the applicant would support the appropriateness of this type of siding on this mainly brick um, fabric structure. Also, the foundation um, staff uh, could not determine. There were a couple um, notes on the plans, um, and with respect to the elevation views, best as we could determine, uh, there are just the exposed piers um, proposed. Uh, so the applicant may be able to address some if they, uh, obviously those would be structural, but perhaps um, they propose to do something with the foundation uh, as far as the uh, look of that. And then with respect to item eight, the overall mass and, and positioning of the addition uh, seems fine. And um, item nine, uh, the, we feel that the renovation does not meet the city's guidelines. And again, it can meet the land development code and it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. So um, while the, the applicant did 
submit additional information. Um, we feel, staff feels that the application um, still suffers from some deficiencies, and those are too overwhelming, too detailed to be placed as conditions on an, on an approval. So at this time, staff is recommending denial of this application. Um, the um, public was notified by postcards. We did not receive any responses to those notifications. Are there any questions? Thank you. Any questions of staff before? We... Yeah. Okay. Would the applicant uh, like to come forward and make a presentation about the request? Hi, I'm Bruce Waters. I own Drafting Board Designs in Newport Ritchie. Uh, we're an architectural firm. Actually, we're the oldest architectural firm. Pasco, I've had that company for Sir, 38 years. Before you years. begin, my understanding is there's no affidavit on file for you to be able to represent the applicant. So I just need a verbal um, acknowledgement from the applicant just for purposes of our legal record that you are okay with him speaking and presenting on your behalf. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, it's not a problem. Uh, some of the information we supplied to Pat earlier, and some of it I wanted to bring to you so you could physically see it. Let's start at the roof and, and come all the way down on the, on the whole project. Um, the roof that's on the house right now is a GAF Timberline Lifetime Shingle. And the actual shingle that's on the house is called a charcoal. If I can come up to the board, I can show you guys what, what it looks like. Give you a good idea. Real popular thing that's been used for years. Mm -hmm. some of the old houses. I'll probably be familiar with some kind of maple construction. You, sorry, what you're going to have to do is just show everybody and then go back to the podium because we're not going to be able to pick you up on the mic. This is the shingle that's on the roof right now. Okay. Charcoal. And what's the proposed? And we're going to match the exact shingle that's on this front. So lifetime, GAF, uh, shingle that's on the front. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Waters, if I might. Yes, ma'am. Before we go forward, I don't want to make sure I understand. When you're talking about the roof, you're talking about the new roof on the addition. You're not talking about re-roofing the whole house. Is no, that correct? No, ma'am. We're only going to roof the new addition. Addition only. Okay. And um, we had talked about different types of roofs and different types of uh, engineering practices and things that they do down here in Florida. And like I said, we're an old company. And uh, back when we had the hurricanes and we did a lot of damage and stuff, uh, especially down Pinellas County, Sarasota, Hillsborough County, going through, you know, going through the, the I-4 corridor. There's a lot of engineering studies done at that time, and they, they looked at metal roofs versus tile roofs versus shingle roofs. And the crazy thing it worked out to be is the cheapest roof that you can buy is a shingle roof, but it's the safest roof that's made today. Tile is actually, it's like flying missiles. That's the most expensive roof that you can get. But once one tile pops, it, it's just a repeat uh, process to where it'll actually peel off the entire roof and as far as metal once metal starts to go it's pretty much the same thing they've come up with a new type of uh, used to be tar paper now they call it pill and stick and it's just almost impossible to get it off once you put it down and then they go back and they put this shingle over top of it luckily the roof that's on that house right now is this particular roof system so it's going to be an easy match it's an easy color to blend so there won't be a difference in color um, a couple other things that was in there when you get away from the roof would have been the windows. Now, whenever you go to the old, old historical windows, all of those windows were made out of wood. There wasn't fiberglass, there wasn't aluminum and all that stuff going back in the day. So your two biggest window manufacturers that do a replica window, which is similar to that, is going to be Pella and Anderson. And uh, we chose to go with the Pella window because they, you can either buy what's off the stock, like at Home Depot or Lowe's, whichever, any of those companies. Or they will make an exact window to fit exactly in that opening. That's the same way. It's an aluminum-clad window, has vinyl on the outside, and it's all white vinyl to be an exact match 
of the window that's in there today. So those windows that's there today are single hung windows, one over ones. And it's got a two and a half inch flange. It goes all the way around the window and it's trim on the outside of that. Again, that's all white. Uh, the house that's next door just to the west, apparently from what I've, I've been told, those two houses are sister houses. They was built off the same type of building plans. And if you took the houses side by side, the porches were the same, the interiors were the same, the back of the houses were the same. Now they've had a little bit of work during the course of their life. And uh, the, the, uh, uh, their windows, I think, was kind of painted a little bit of a tan color versus the white trim. And they got tan in some spots and white in some spots, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a mixture. All the trim that's going to be going on this home will be white. The window trim will be white. The, uh, the siding was going to be white. And what they were going to use instead of uh, like just a plain old wood siding, we chose to go with the hardy plank. And hardy plank is a really good siding. They've been accepted on uh, a lot of the historical boards to be the same type of siding that you would have on the old wood clapboard today. But the big advantage is that is hardy plank is fireproof. It's made out of concrete and fiber, will not burn, will not explode. You can't destroy it by any type of heat. Doesn't expand, doesn't warp. Uh, where a wood, you take a wood and you take the old paint. Now the old paint isn't like the acrylic paints of today. If you start digging up underneath a lot of that wood, you're gonna get down to oil-based paint. And once it gets to a certain temperature, it will catch on fire and eventually oil paint will explode and it's quite toxic to where the hardy plank, you just go back, you put a sealer on top of it. At the end of that, you go back and you put the color that you want, which is gonna be white for this to match everything else. And then uh, once you're done with that, you don't have to worry about any of the uh, problems that you would have with some of the other siding. Now, if you're looking at the building plans, you see the siding coming down just mm -hmm. to where it starts below the floor system. It's open left, it's open below that. I did that on purpose so you could see where the gaps are from the ground up to the bottom of the floor system. Uh, whenever we're hired to go down and take a look at that, I did a structural analysis of the foundation that was underneath there. And being in this for a lot of years, um, there's not a footer that's gonna work that's underneath that construction. Let's just go through that part of it first because I went in to find out about a demo permit that's an extremely unsafe structure as it sits today. You've got a footer that's not connected in any way, shape, or form to the block. The block columns that's underneath there do not have any mortar in between them. They was just stacked. There's no concrete and steel in it. When it gets up to the floor system, it's just sitting there, nothing's attached. And then when you look at the floor system, it's the same way. Then you go up to the two by four frame walls. The pieces of two by fours that was nailed together and kind of pieced then when you get up to the conventional roof system, that's all two by fours. They haven't made a roof system out of two by fours probably in a hundred years. That should have been a minimum of a two by six. There's no hurricane clamps in there. It's not even attached to the original structure. So as soon as I seen that, I talked to the owner and I went down to the building department and said, we need to get a demo permit to remove that section that's sitting there right now because a good storm, that's gonna go. So that's extreme safety factor right there that I was concerned about more than putting the building back together. So I said, once that's gone, there should be proper footers put in, the columns should be put in the way they're supposed to be with the concrete and the steel, then you do your floor system, and then you do your frame walls on the outside, now you've got your skeleton to work with. Whenever you look at the roof system that's up there right now on the old versus the new, there's an exact pitch on that roof that whole roof system coming down the side is set up at the same pitch to match exact, exactly what's there, turn and go across the back and have exactly the same pitch on the back. So it will match the structure just as if it was done at one time. Uh, part of it's conventionally framed as a roof and then the other part of it was set up to where on a conventional truss it had to be extended, <coughs> kind of like a, a 12 to one slope where it'd come down and then slope down on the outside to match because they all have to be just over seven feet across the back, seven foot across the side to come out the same pitch up front. We did keep the, the little walkway upstairs the way it was. We didn't want to touch that. And then um, as far as the electrical, the electrical would be updated that was in there and then would bring the new section up to the current code as it is right now, which is a 
2000 or uh, 2017 building code, which came out January 1st, 2018. Now, this the the actual siting that's going to go in there. If I can come up, I'll show you. Exactly. I ordered a piece. It didn't get in, but I can show you a picture of what it looks like. And the siding is not only going to go just down to the side where it's framed. That will be continued all the way to the ground, so it looks like it matches. And then. Um, uh, and I'll show you that here in just a second. And then we, we talked also about the windows and the doors. When I first looked at that, the original door is up front. And of course, that was closed in around the 60s. And then whenever you get to the back of that, she went next door and shot some pictures of the house, which is a sister home to it. They have a sliding glass door in the back. And she says, I'd like to have a sliding glass door. And I'm thinking, well, if that was done here, you know, not too awful far back, you could probably get a sliding glass door put in a back to match the same thing. Again, that would be a Pella door, um, which, which would match exactly what's next door. Now, if the board chooses not to do that, then we said, okay, French doors go back to about 1790. So I also put a packet in on Pella, French doors in the back, and which would be the single glass panes, which match some of the doors that's in the house currently today, which would be all the way back to the time that the house was originally built. So uh, let me show you this siding, if I, if I can come down through here for just a second. Just, it's the best thing to do is just let everybody see it, and then please make your comments back at the podium, because otherwise it won't pick it up on the tape, and we need to do that to record the <coughs> record. You're about to lose your name tag. How about you start over here? This is not the color, this is the size of it. Is that wood? Okay. I decided that they said wood. Let the record uh, reflect that Mr. Waters um, sh has now showed us two different items. One earlier, he showed us a sample of the um, shingle to be used on the roof, and the second thing he just showed us was a sample uh, cut sheet um, from the Hardy board uh, to be used on the this for the siding for the addition. Okay, on this Hardy board, like I said, we've used these in a lot of the older homes down in Naples and stuff like that, and it matches the, the wood grain. That's what we were looking for. But when you take that wood all the way down to the ground, you guys know how termite works and some of that stuff, you know, creatures and stuff in it. Uh, and also, when you add wood to the exterior of some of the homes, you're adding the factor in there that you're taking a chance that this thing could catch on fire down the road if something went wrong with it. And that's why we chose to do the hardy plank. That's a lifetime siding. It's guaranteed for life. Once it's installed properly and painted and sealed, that'll be there long after we're gone. And uh, but it still gives you that look of wood. It gives you that feel of wood. You get the texture of, of the wood itself. Uh, and it also seals better than wood. It doesn't expand and contract, and it doesn't warp on you, and uh, it's totally waterproof once it's installed. Uh, is there any questions on any of these that you have that I can help you with? And again, like I said, that siding's gonna go all the way down the entire side to the ground. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's going to go down to the ground or is it going to go to the piers? I'm confused. It's going to go all the way to the ground. So those piers that's sitting there right now, it can go right over top of those piers. Those piers will be just behind it because the piers set back about an inch in from where the siding is right now above it. So as the piers come down, the, the siding is also going to come down and just in front of the piers. So when you look at it, you're not going to see the pier. You're only going to see the siding just as if that whole wall is siding. Did you have, did you, are you finished with your presentation? Yes, ma'am, I was just wondering if y'all had any questions on that while I was up here. We do, I know I do, and I'm, maybe some of the other board does. I guess, first problem I have with the application is, um, some of the things that you're telling us and some of the documents, when you look at them together, they're inconsistent. For example, I, read, I do this for a living too, I'm not an engineer, I'm a planner, I've read plans. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I don't know, way too long, <laughs> more than 30 years. I understand. But I can't match up on your site plan to your elevations. They don't seem to match up to me. The, the site plan to the floor plan, 
I can't quite figure out what you're doing. I mean, I generally know what you're doing. You mean off of the Just, survey? No, from the proposed site, from the proposed floor plan, plan or the site plan. plan to your proposed, you have an existing site plan, you have a proposed site plan, then you have a proposed floor plan. And yes, ma'am. The dimensions of the of the the size and the dimensions of the addition on the proposed site plan don't match up to the floor plan. On the floor plan, it's seems to be bigger. My other concern is we don't have a full elevation, which is what we do require on a case like this where you're doing it in addition on the the two, you, ha you gave it to us for the rear elevation, but we don't have a, a side elevation, the east side, you, you're not showing us the whole side of the building, so I can't really get a grasp of the entire thing that's going on. So you want elevation uh, included the, the existing structure also? It needs to show the whole side of that building, that whole east side of the building that exists today, and then yes, how you're going to propose it, because it's really hard to tell if the addition is going to be consistent and compatible with the existing building, because we don't know what the existing building looks like. Uh, okay. I don't know who, I don't know if the staff provided us with the photograph or the applicant provided the photograph? The applicant did. The applicant did, so. And, uh, you know, most of us probably have been to the site. Some of us drive by there every day, you know, because it's a small town. It's a major road. So those, that's kind of some quick comments. I will say, too, for another inconsistency that you really need to, to fix on your application is on your proposed site plan, it says new two-story garage. Well, there's nothing in your application about a garage. So We found out at the last minute that she wouldn't be able to, she'd have to go back and reapply for that. Right. So that needs to come off, you know, of, of the site plan. Um, but, but bigger than that, I guess, you know, those are procedural issues and those are, those are fixable. I'm sure you can, can do that. My problem is the entire building is a brick building. The entire building is brick. It has been since the beginning of time, since it was built. And yet for this addition, you're introducing a new material. And I, I understand that probably it's cheaper. I would guess it's cheaper, although that has nothing to do with our decision, to introduce a whole new material on a side that you can see from a public street um, is not consistent with what our guidelines talk about. If it were on the back, a small portion on the back, maybe that would be consistent and compatible, but when you're adding, you know, you have wood nowhere on the building, except in the, <laughs> well, I mean, the, the trim of the wood, uh, trim of the doors and, and the windows, but the prominent building material on this building is brick. Um, I'm also concerned that you're, you're using these piers and the photos that y'all submitted show it pretty clearly. <laughs> this building has a pretty unusual and pretty interesting um, brick pattern along the bottom that's replicated throughout the whole building. That's underneath the brick section up, up, up front and on the side, correct? Right, under the entire house as it is today, except for where the brick comes all the way down to the ground. So, again, you're introducing a new style of a pier foundation instead of continuing this pattern um, that would... So you're, you're introducing another incompatible element to your design. Um, but th the biggest problem I have is you've got inconsistencies in the application, you've got things on your plans that, that are not advertised and that were not reviewed, and then you've got things that really are not compatible you know, with the historic element. Um, I personally am not going to vote for a sliding glass door. Whether or not the next guy did it before the, the, new, the ordinance was in place, really is irrelevant. Sliding yes, glass doors are not a historic element. French doors, yes, I'd be all about. I don't have a problem with the width of it, but it's, it's got to be something that is a historic um, element that would have happened, you know, in that historic period. Understand. Recognizing that it's new materials and new, you know, that, but it's still a sliding glass uh, door just didn't exist in, you know, when most of the houses in Correct. Spring and that was built. the purpose of putting the French doors in there so the board decided they didn't want the sliders. Then, then the owner could agree to put the French doors in lieu of the sliders. Right, but your plans that you're asking us to look at today show a sliding glass door. So again, th there's just there's so many things on your plans that, in my opinion, I don't think we can approve. I wouldn't approve. I'm not trying to speak for the rest of the board, but you, you've got all these inconsistencies, and this board is all about, you know, when we approve something, um, what you see is what you get. The plans have got to show exactly what we approve because then when the staff goes and looks at it for building permits, it's real easy. They look at your building permits, they put the two project side plans side by side, here's what the HPB approved, here's what the permit is, and then they sign off on it or they find, you know, minor changes here and there. I, I wouldn't know I wouldn't know how to direct the staff to to review it at this point because you've got so many <laughs> inconsistencies. Again, 
between what you're saying tonight <coughs> and what's in the plans. Um, that's, I guess that's my biggest. No, I understand concern. what you're saying. Uh, like I said, th there was some leeway given there where we'd be able to go back and forth either way, so I can understand that. If you, like if you guys wanted to go for an extension on that, we can go back and adjust the building plan so there's nothing left open where there's any leeway. It would be specific from the ground to the top, both sides, and we can address the uh, siding on the back, change the sliders to the French doors, and then uh, other than the uh, um, doing the clapboard versus doing the uh, brick on the sides. So that's something that uh, you're saying basically it's either the brick or nothing. Is no, that, I, I'm, I'm understanding just speaking this right? For myself, I, and I had some questions. I, I want to stop for a second and let <coughs> the rest of the board chime in and, and, and give their concerns because I, I'm only one vote. To and understand. I, and it's, I want the rest of the board to be able to have an opportunity. I just um, I got to speak first, so I did, and I told you of my concerns. But I'd like anyone else on the board like to? Well, I agree with what you've said, Ms. Tarantini. Um, but there's a couple of things that bothered me when I saw this application. Because as the Heritage <coughs> Preservation Board, I wanted to understand how we went from constructing and stopping construction and changing contractors and when the permits came in and when they didn't and what the building looked like before all this renovation started. I just, I still don't see what happened to this building. It's in a historical area and we're here to preserve the historical buildings in yes, this area. So it really concerns me the way the whole thing was put together and done. And I still don't know, was the windows damaged? Or were, were, did you buy the home and it was already an issue? I, I, Why I don't wasn't know. this brought up? Where are the pictures? Where is some documentation to show me what happened? Because all of that was done prior to me coming into the I picture. Know. I know. Would you have any questions? Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Carol Notayas. Um, my sister hired a contractor in May 2016, and the house was the way you have Googled it and saw it with that back porch and the Jalasi windows and the way it was. And when she hired the contractor, she had told him that she wanted the job to get done with permits, with plans, and that she wanted just to get it restored because the foundation of the house was not good. The back porch, it was just a pathway to get into the back house. And the foundation, that was a back porch, an open porch, and the only way where the foundation was up was with those little columns, those little wooden columns. And also they had a few cement blocks. So when we were going in and out of the house, it was as if you were in a boat. The floor was not straight. The purpose of it getting restored the way it was, was just that the floor was straight. That's it, that's all we wanted. At the end, Hemily Foundation was hired, Justin Jones was the contractor. Um, he went to do the job, like a quick job, without permits, without plans, without nothing. My sister was coming down to the building department herself and she was asking, the employees at the building department, has there been a permit taken out? They would tell her, no. Have there been plans submitted? <coughs> no. So this guy just came in, he sent in a crew of about 10 people, which you would think they escaped from a psychiatric center. They did a very, very sloppy job. They didn't do any foundation whatsoever. And then he wanted to get paid, which at the end he didn't get paid. The only thing that he got paid at the beginning was like a $2,000 deposit. And that was the end of that. That's what had happened. Did he damage any of the windows or the door? What, what everything happened? was demolished. They had demolished everything. Demolished everything. everything. They had demolished everything to make everything new. But they didn't do anything. So we were left with this whole mess. Back <coughs> then, Anthony, the director of the building department, came down. My sister had spoken with him. She didn't know who he was. You know, he asked him what did he want. He told her that I've been sent here by your contractor. I have a lot of pressure by him. And I need to see what's going on because this all is very suspicious to me. So he saw what was going on. Everything was horrible. She said don't pass the job because then she would have been left with liens with the contractor. 
and he didn't do anything, he left everything as is. So that's what happened in, let's say, May, June 2016. Then the case was closed, those six months, 2016. Then the 12 months of 2017, no one bothered no one. Then the previous owner, Ms. Leah Kritikos, went to the code enforcement, and she reported the family, and she said that there's um, a job done without permits, it's not finished, there's grass, there's trash cans, there's debris, and they were kind of building a story through the code enforcement. And we had them on our backs, and we were trying to work with them, and the first date for the building to, that was supposed to be inspected was in February 2018, and there was snowballing this. It was going, you know, February, March, May, it just kept on going, I guess, in order for them to have enough of evidence to build up a story and have a hearing, which they did have the hearing. It was July 12th of this year, 2018. And they asked us, you know, actually I was here, and they, again, I explained everything to them. They gave me two months' time to do the work. And I asked them if they can give me an extra month, which they did. So from July, supposedly, the work was supposed to be all finished, October 12th. But it wasn't, because it was very hard to get contractors. Um, you know, Bruce, I had met him in August. Again, you know, things were slow with everyone, the plans getting everything together. And that's what happened. And then I went to give in the papers. I believe it was October, and I spoke with the woman, Lisa, in the building department, and she said, your building is in the housing preservation. You just can't get permits just like that, which we did not know, and that's when we found out. And again, we're trying to work, and we're trying to do all this. So I don't know like what to say. Like I want to do this more. I love this house. We've also purchased another house. We love that house as well. Whatever we do, we do it based on restoration. We don't do it like, you know, modern things and getting things that are irrelevant because that's why we bought the homes. And when we bought them, mind you, they were not at all in good condition. Like I had to get a new roof, we had to get new windows. We had to throw out rugs, we had to do electrical work. I mean, the building department wasn't involved, no one was involved, like we knew what to do. And we did everything, you know, of course those were all the permits, the roof, the windows, electrical. But then a lot of other things that we've been doing, like we know that it has to be restored the way it was. And that's where we are now. So now, the home belongs to both you and your sister? You're, you're no, no, the house, actually, my sister, um, she gave it to my son, which my son is Stephanos, he's wearing the olive shirt. So he's the new owner, and that's it. So, like, I want to do this just the way you guys are saying, you know, we want to restore it, we want it to be beautiful, we want it to be the way it was. But we also want to do it. Like, we don't want to be here, like, every month. Like, we live in New York. It's not easy for us to be coming here. Everyone works at a different pace here, you know, as far as hiring contractors, hiring people. <coughs> it's tomorrow, Friday, Monday, next week. We'll do it. And time goes by. So <laughs> I heard a few comments earlier where you were saying about um, – Ms. Terpani, you were saying about the back that it has to be brick. I didn't say that it has to be. I'm concerned that the entire house is brick. It is. And you're adding a, a new material, and I, without seeing an elevation, it seems to me, just thinking about it, that it's not going to look good. It's not going to be compatible. But yeah, I don't I know agree. for sure because yeah. I haven't seen the elevation. But I, my gut feeling right now, sitting here, knowing what I know, I've seen the building a million times like right. the rest of us have is I'm concerned about using a new material. Right, right. Because, yeah, that in the past was um, lattice, I remember. There was lattice all around there. It was a back porch. Uh, the rest that has brick, you have to take into consideration also, like the front part has a terrazzo floor. We're not talking about the inside. We don't do anything to do with the Yeah, inside. I know, but yeah. in order for all that to be held up, it can't be like on wooden columns or something light. It has to be, you know, like a very strong foundation. So I don't know. Like that's one thing I wanted to bring out. I mean, I I I think with some creativity, you know, you might talk to, you know, your designer. Maybe there's a way to incorporate some 
brick in part of that addition as an accent somehow. I mean, I like I just, a lattice. Uh, Are you talking about like a lattice? No, what you mean by lattice? But I'm just saying I, I'm not here to design it for you. I'm just telling you that right now, sitting here right now, with the information I have, it doesn't seem to me that that adding a new material to a building that is 100% brick brick mm. is going to be consistent with our guidelines. Right. But I'm open to contemplating that I'm open to if I saw the full elevation I might feel differently about okay. it but okay. a new material and it's that large and it's on a major street so it's kind of like three strikes if it were an interior part in the back where no one could see it that was that's different but you're a corner lot and side. this is your this is a side street so mm -hmm. um, I mean clearly what it was before it was a sleeping porch I can I can pretty much bet that's what it was um, it's not even a, a sleeping porch. It's a very small passway to go in the back. Well, what I'm saying is historically it probably was a sleeping porch or it could have been a passage, you know, into the kitchen, but it could it looks to me like it was a sleeping porch that was then enclosed with windows. Um, that's very common, you know, in the south. Um, it's kind of okay. that's what this reminds me of. That doesn't really matter except that now with the photograph we have an idea of what it looked like. Right, so exactly. Not only you're changing the material, you're changing the whole fenestration pattern, the whole window pattern, and you're changing <coughs> the roof line because this building existing, the roof line stops a little bit way short of where you're wanting to extend it. So um, that's very true very because different. the distance is much shorter. Like now it's going to be longer, it's going to be a larger room. So the roof has to be longer downwards. And I, and I well, and again, my other concern is what I see on the site plan doesn't match up to the floor plan. The uh, size of the no, addition. No, that I understand. I mean, maybe it's upside down. One of them is reversed. I don't know. But I mean, like I said, I read plans for a living. No, I, I can't understand. tell what you're doing. I understand. So. Can I show you these um, doors that I took pictures of that I was saying? I mean, I know that you're kind of against it, but I just want to show you them. Film took me, bro. Of course, this may be what. 451. Is that what you're referring to as lattice yeah. work? Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, this. But I, that was I, not the way it was before. All right, we, we got to limit our conversation yeah, so okay. that we keep, uh, so we get it. it show the, okay. you feel free to show the rest of the board and then we'll come back. You can come back to the podium and we can finish this conversation. I think we need to move on. Th got this is a neighboring board. house? Is that what? Okay. And you remember that this, we haven't had an ordinance forever in Tarpon. I think it was, when was it originally approved? I want to say 88, 89, 90? Yeah, I was going to say 1990. Board, other comments, concerns? I sympathize with all the problems that they've had. I mean, it's been very frustrating for them. But what we have to base our decision on is exact presentation. And there's too many variances, leeways, things that we can't say yes or no to because it's vague. So I think represented in a more definitive way would be to your advantage. Yes, the ordinance was adopted in 1990. 1990? Mm -hmm. So any work that was there before 1990 wouldn't have been reviewed by this board. So, you know, there's lots of improvements that were done to properties way before 1990. Uh, all right, what are the, any other, um, I forgot to ask, is there anyone here that wants to speak for or against this application? One way or the other, we're happy to hear you. This is for the 455 East Tarpon Avenue. Okay, seeing no one rise, it's back to the board. What would you like to do, board? I don't see her. Well, I'm happy to give them, I mean, I, I know the staff made their recommendation. I personally would be happy to give them a continuance so that they could yeah, resubmit, agree. redraw, resubmit based on the comments they heard tonight. And then you don't have to pay the application fee again. You have to pay the advertising again because I, I don't know when you would come back in. Um, we can continue it to a date certain or we can continue it to a date uncertain. And then whenever you submit 
the documents according to the city schedule is when you would get scheduled. I mean, do you have a preference, Ms. McNeese, on that? I don't. I think it's completely up to the applicant. I know you have an active code case. Uh, I think that we've talked about and you've gone, you have a staff report that has several items and you've heard from the board and I'm hoping the next round, if we do continue this, we can, we can have all of those items. So I'm wondering if you think you can do that. Uh, the next meeting is January 14th and I would need those items obviously ahead of time to review. Would you need it before Christmas to be able to make this public hearing? Ooh, probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can continue to January 14th if you want to, and then if, if you have the material and you're able to get on the agenda and, and have the notice given, that's fine. And if not, because we do have the holidays, you can come up to the um, podium, please. We were just speaking just a minute ago, and with Christmas and stuff coming up and New Year's and all that stuff, it's going to take time to go back, and because when you guys get this back, it's going to have a lot more detail than you got this time. Okay. And uh, that way, all the different items will be covered, sections will be covered, and then what we'd like to do is be able to go back and have all this information for you, and if we could do it February instead of January, that gives us a little bit more time to do a little more research. Okay. And then... Um, um, let me let me ask you this looking at it you know trying to work with you guys as much as we can could we get the board's opinion on what they think about deciding versus going back and doing all the brick because if you look at the original house the house was not all brick you had a porch in the back that was all wood with wood trim if you look at the front of the house and look at the house next door that house has been closed in the original house that was there it was also a, a wood porch and all that front was wood on it. So it is, a, it is a combination of wood and brick, not just all brick. But uh, like you said, there could be sections that could be brick in it, or we could back, go back and do the, the bottom end brick to make it match the front section. And this time you'll see the elevations of the old and the new combined together so you can see what those look like. And then go back and uh, we could run that bottom brick all the way through to the back so the the venting part underneath the floor system would match from the front to the rear and you could mix and match if we do something like that with accents it would the board consider using some of the uh, the, the uh, hardy plank on the side or is that something that's just totally out so we'll have some type of guidelines from you guys which way to go uh, I, we can't we don't take a vote on these issues individual board members can respond if they like I personally don't think Hardy Board is appropriate on a contributing building of this stature. That's my personal opinion. So, and the other thing that I do think is really important is you've got that, that brick lattice on the bottom and the foundation on the entire rest of the house. And if it's not on this part, um, or some, maybe they do a variance of it, maybe there's a slightly different pattern to, to show that it's a new addition, I would be open to that. But to not have that brick uh, That's what I just foundation. said. We could run that all the way through so it all matches front to rear. I'm yeah, only yes, one person, so I'll let the other board, yes, if the board members want to respond, they can. <clears throat> Anybody else want to say anything while I'm up here? I like the idea of a brick foundation to complement the rest of the house. Yes, ma'am. It, I, I it would be appropriate. Okay. As far as the siding goes, it would be an addition, and I don't see where it would have to be the same brick all the way through because it is an addition, but the support would have to be, Yes, in, in my opinion. Because the, the existing house does have siding on the other side of the house existing now, So, I, and I, I agree with what you're saying. Is everybody pretty much, anybody else have any comments on that? I agree with Ms. Terrapini. I, I just don't want it to, I, I, that's too much siding down the side of an all brick home okay i feel without uh you know id a picture or representation of what that side's going to look like it's just i i really can't i can't be advised any either way okay um, now, okay L let me ask you this then if we do the new presentation for you guys i could do a siding that sh or the side that shows the siding and the brick that's up front that's existing with that brick all the way on the bottom 
We could do also a, a, a side elevation that would show brick all the way through with a brick on the bottom. Like a PowerPoint presentation? Yes, and you, you, could, you could see either one of those and then say, okay, you know, we'll, we agree that this, this is okay on this side. You're going to do two elevations is what you're two saying. Two elevations is the oh, same thing for the sides and the back. So that way you get a chance to see, because that, that, that's what I'm asking is, I, I, you know, I, I'm willing to work with you and I'm, I'm just trying to get a little input from the board because it's, it's like, well, why do it one way and beat it to death and go back and come back again, where if we get a little bit of input to where what the board's thinking and what they're looking for, that gives me a little bit better idea how to do the design on it. I think that would be helpful to have the two elevations and then we can And you see can see the, the, the two sides and the that two rears. That would be really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And one last thing, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this earlier. That's okay. Um, take a look at the pattern of the windows on the rest of the house. On the new addition, three seem kind of just on there without any real pattern to them. Okay. Um, it doesn't really reflect, I mean, the rest of the house, they've got two together and then a door and then two together. I mean, I think you need to, to look at that a little bit and see if there's um, some fenestration pattern that is a little more consistent with what you have in the rest of the house. Okay. We can do that too. Okay, so we've given you quite a bit of direction. Um, uh, Ms. McNeese, what's the February board meeting date, please? That's February the 4th. I would need all of the materials by January 18th at the very latest. That's fair. In order to review it and write the staff report for this yes, board. Okay. All right. So do we have a motion to continue to February 4th of 2019? Motion to continue <coughs> February 4th of the 19th. I second. Uh, motion by Ms. Milford and second by Ms. Cornell to continue to February 4th, 2019. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Terrapenny? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 0, February 4th, 2019. Feel free to talk to the staff in between now and then. And if you have a question about what we've said or you want to listen to the tape, or she can give you some pretty good guidance about what our issues are. And, uh, okay, thank you. And I don't know where your other house is, but you might want to check and make sure it's, if it's in the historic district, any renovations to that house you need to go through <laughs> preservation. Well, it's a pretty big historic district. Okay. <laughs> well, you, no, I'm not asking you. I'm just saying we go, it goes all the way to the bayou. It goes a couple, another block east of where you are today. It goes north um, almost to City Hall, and it goes south to Lemon. So it's a pretty big district. So take, let the staff um, confirm that for you. She can give you a map, too, I believe. Yeah, she can give you a map. All right, let's move on to the last case for this evening, um, case CA-1833 at 333 Bay Street. Did you do that on purpose, all those threes? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. All right, this is a um, proposal to replace uh, most of the um, windows on an existing uh, contributing structure at 333 Bay Street. This home was built in 1957, um, and uh, basically uh, it has aluminum <coughs> windows, which may be the original windows. Um, the replacement, it is the proposal is to replace those with vinyl windows. The replacement style uh, matches the existing windows uh, with a simple single pane design. The existing windows have faux shutters and concrete sills, and uh, those are not proposed to be disturbed. Uh, the applicant is pr proposing replacement in the current configuration. Uh, therefore, fenestration uh, will not change on this structure. They're proposing white trim, which is consistent with the, with the um, and would complement the home. Um, The notal, notable architectural features, which would be the brick sills, brick band, and faux shutters, will not be disturbed. Uh, the renovations are consistent with historic guidelines, meet the land development code, and are consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, staff is recommending approval uh, of this application, and the postcards were sent. There were no um, uh, responses to the postcards. Any questions of the staff before we hear from the applicant? Oh, would the applicant like to come forward? <coughs> mm. 
You can use the podium there, please. Yes, my name's Greg Gage. I live at 333 Bay Street. And, and I'm assuming you're the property owner, Mr. Gage? Yes, my wife and I. Okay, great. Um, anything you want to add to the staff report? No, I read it, and it, it sounds like exactly what we're planning on doing, and we came to be available. Okay. <laughs> so just to make sure, um, the staff report said this a couple times, just want to confirm with you, you're you're not changing the opening of the window. You're not taking out any of the banding or any of the detail around. You're just putting in a new window in that same opening that's there. That's what they measured and okay. wrote down and quoted, yes. Okay. Questions for yeah. the applicant? Any questions for the applicant? No. Okay. Um, let me just see if there's anybody else that wants. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak to this case? Okay, seeing no one rise. Um, I had just one question, Ms. McNeese, on the last page. Let's see. <coughs> on page three in the recommendation, it says recommends approval of 38 windows, but earlier I think it said there was 19 windows. Yeah, there's like two per section. It might be like 19 openings, but it involves 38 units. Okay. Or they, maybe they're calling it it's a single hung, so there's an upper and a lower. Ah. So maybe they're calling that two windows per opening. 19 openings, 38 <laughs> windows. I would disagree with that and say it's a typo. Mm. <laughs> really, you're calling, every, you're calling um, each opening a window? No, it's just a typo. Okay. I did call Mr. Gage to clarify which windows uh, because I believe there are a couple on the back you're there, not replacing two facing because it the wasn't backyard clear to on me. the garage that we're not touching. They're, you yeah, can't so see them. That's why I had approximately 19 at the beginning of the okay. staff report because that's what that's so, what he told me. So, so, Mr. Gage, which two are the ones that are not being? Um, <coughs> they're on the <coughs> east wall of a garage facing the interior of the backyard. You really can't see them from the street. East, the east wall of the garage, oh, okay. So it's basically on the east property line. Inter yes, internal it, it faces the alley back area. into the yard and the alley. Okay, the so staff, do you know which ones those are when they come through? Yes. Okay, okay, any further discussion? No. Ready for a motion? Thank you, Mr. Gage. Thank you. I make a motion to approve. I second it. Motion by Mrs. Milford, seconded by Mrs. Cornell to approve as approved this application. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Mrs. Terrapani? Yes. So the motion is approved four to zero. Just please, please, please be sure have your contractor get a building permit. You don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Great. Just don't want to, we're trying to avoid any code enforcement issues. So. All right. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Sorry you had to wait a little bit. <clears throat> any staff comments before we adjourn? No comments. Thank you. Any uh, board comments? Yeah. Um, I don't, this was paper of our contacts was entered into our <laughs> packet and my uh, home telephone number is, I don't have a home telephone number. Okay. Cell phone only. And looks like many people are going that way. <laughs> Ms. McNeese, would you make that uh, note for Mrs. Page's contact information, please? No home phone. No home number. Yes. And then um, thank you for getting, um, having the clerk provide this. That was very helpful. And the only other suggestion I had is in our uh, January packet. Would you mind putting in there the, the um, calendar for the year, it's all of our public hearing dates? I, I know it's on the website, but if you just include it, it'd be helpful, and then we'll have it right. Yeah. Certainly. And yes. we're our our next meeting is is a week later than normal, so mm -hmm. it's January fourteenth. Okay, everybody, we're good with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we are adjourned, and we will see everybody on January fourteenth. Hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned.
at 7.35 p.m.